From the pyramids to modern day space stations, this is the history of engineering. We will talk and summarize the historical developments in engineering history. Engineering developed as human and societal needs developed. Early on, they used trial and error rather than mathematics and science. Here's a short history engineering timeline by Mr. Engineering Guy on YouTube. Thousands of years of engineering and now we can do this. How did we come this far? Our journey starts with Imhotep, world's first known engineer famous for designing the Pyramid of Djoser, a massive structure for its time, 62 meters high. The construction of this pyramid marks the start of a new era, the 3rd and 4th dynasty of Egypt, an era where dozens of these pyramids were built, with this pyramid probably the first one. All these pyramids were constructed without the use of wheels or pulleys. Although wheels were already commonly known in the Middle East, they strangely didn't get to Egypt. Pulleys, however, wouldn't be invented till a thousand years later. Not even 100 years after the construction of Joseph's Pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza was built, world's tallest structure for almost 4,000 years. From the seven wonders of the ancient world, this structure is the only one still standing today. The others were the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Temple of Artemis, the Statue of Shoes at Olympia, the Mausoleum at Harlequinessus, the Colossus of Rhodas, and the Lighthouse of Alexandria. Built in a city where 130 years later the hourglass was invented. A great timekeeping device that could accurately track small amounts of time. Since all they had before was the sundial, invented around 1500 BC, and under some conditions the highly inaccurate water clock, invented 100 years earlier. Although some say that the water clocks already appeared in China as early as 4000 BC. China is also famous for inventing the trebuchet as early as 400 BC. This siege weapon improved attacking castles and fortresses by complementing the use of steel swords and the invention of the battering ram, first used in southern Italy. Although much of the engineering of that time was related to military and war, also mechanical engineering started booming. Because Archimedes' crew was invented and the first water mills were used. But engineering with water wasn't new, because long before in the field of hydraulic engineering, the Egyptians started building dams for their agriculture, the Romans started building their famous aqueducts, and the Greeks built a kilometer long tunnel used for water transportation. The Greeks were very active around that time, because the guy in Thales of Miletus discovered static electricity, the first step to electrical engineering although real experiments in this field would not get started for the next 2000 years. Except for the fact that these three items were found together in Iraq. Combined, they can form a battery, but we are unsure whether this was ever functional or not. All these people and all these nations were the very first engineers, since the modern word engineer is derived from the Latin words ingeniary and ingenium, meaning to devise and cleverness. These creations and these inventions were made more than 2,000 years ago, but definitely contributed to the world we live in now. So early civilizations, engineers developed temples and pyramids. They made irrigation systems, dams and aqueducts. They used metal tools to develop weapons. They built roadways, water wheels, and eventually vehicles. Aqueducts were one of the first modern engineering marvels. An aqueduct is a water course constructed to carry water from a source to a distribution point far away. In modern engineering, the term aqueduct is used for any system of pipes, ditches, canals, tunnels, or other structures used for this purpose. The Romans constructed aqueducts throughout the Republic and later empire to bring water from outside sources into cities and towns. 
One way we can see the advance of engineering through history is to look at the size of the structures that were built. Enjoy this short slideshow on the tallest structures throughout history. Advancing all the way to 2009 with the construction of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, United Arab, Arab Emirates at 2,722 feet. This is currently still the tallest structure in the modern world. The evolution of armor and modern armor history reaches all the way back to 3,400 years ago when earliest bronze metal armor sets and gear was created in ancient Greece. With thousands of years of innovation and expansion, history of armors today represent one of the most fascinating pieces of engineering history, with constant innovation and expansion of new techniques and materials, constantly advancing with more and more elaborate armor. But with the introduction of high-powered gunpowder warfare, it made all those armors totally obsolete. It was only with World War I that regular use of metal helmets was standardized as an integral part of the soldier's gear to reduce injury from shrapnel. After World War II, much more advanced and durable industrial materials such as ceramic plates, plastic, and of course Kevlar, which today represents the basis of almost all modern armor gear. The Industrial Revolution was the formalization of many forms of engineering. We saw advances in steam engine improvements, magnetic induction, the first battery, incandescent light bulb, the electric induction motor, chemical elements, as well as agricultural advancements such as the cotton gin, the reaper, and the steel plow. We also saw engineering advancements in flight. Starting in, in 1783, a few aeronauts made during an uncontrolled flight in lighter-than-air balloons. In 1799, Sir George Calais defined the force, defied the forces to lift and drag and represent the first scientific design for a fixed-wing aircraft. In 1903, the Wright brothers developed their experimental aircraft into a marketable product. And by 1905, they have developed what is considered to be a practical flying machine. The first Zeppelin airship was designed in 1900 by Germany and was used for both transportation and, and warfare during World War I. Zeppelins were popular until the Hindenburg disaster in 1937, when hydrogen gas was used instead of helium due to an export restriction resulting in an explosion. Was that an engineering failure? Yes, it was. The Douglas DC-3 passenger aircraft, which first flew in 1935, dominated airline business until the end of World War II, all the way to the advancement of current jet propulsion. In the 20th century, we've seen many advances, taller buildings and structures, facilities to produce and refine products, We've seen advances in radio, television, computer, electronics, and satellites. We've seen advances in computer software, electronics, and aerospace engineering. And we've even seen great advances in medicine and medical imaging. The computer was not born for entertainment or email, but had a need to res resolve a serious number crunching crisis. By 1880, the US population had grown so large that it took more than seven years to tabulate the U.S. Census. The government saw a faster way to get the job done, giving rise to the punch card-based computers that took up entire rooms. By 1970, the newly formed Intel unveils the first memory chip, and we start seeing mini computers. In 1971, Alan Shugart leads a team from IBM engineers to invent the floppy disk 
allowing data to be shared among computers. In 1981, the first IBM personal computer codenamed Acorn is introduced. By 1983, Apple has introduced drop-down menus and icons, and it, and it evolves from the Macintosh. In 1993, the Pentium microprocessor advances the use of graphics and music on PCs, something that was, had never been seen before. In 2003, the first 64-bit processor, AMD's Athlon 64, becomes available to the consumer market. And today, we carry more computing power on our smartphones than was available in those early models. Cell phones are a modern marvel. The first handheld cellular mobile device was demonstrated by John F. Mitchell and Martin Cooper in Motorola in 1973 using a handset weighing 4.4 pounds. In 1983, Motorola released a, a cell phone that cost $4,000 and its charge could last two hours. In early 2000, Nokia introduced phones with durable rectangular shape that fit perfectly in the palm of a hand or purse. The camera phone was first released by Sprint in 2002. In 2007, welcomed the first iPhone. In 2010, the iPhone 4 made its debut and changed everything. It was slim, futuristic looking, phone with a battery life that could keep up with the demand of users everywhere. Engineering in the 21st century will develop and drive advances in computers, space travel, machinery, environmental, and nanotechnology. So what will be next? Will we see artificial intelligence? Will we see commercial space travel, maybe robotics, or advances in entertainment? I hope you enjoyed the presentation.